everyone, and welcome back to Mai's Reviews, a book podcast and blog where I review all types of novels. I'm Maya, and thank you for joining me for another book review. So today's episode is a day late, but it's here, so that's all that matters, guys. And first of all, happy Halloween. Tomorrow is Halloween as I'm recording this, and I'm hoping it's out tonight, the review, but I don't know. Who knows? Uh, maybe Poppy will delete the file. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but today I'm actually very excited for this episode because I'm not reviewing one book but two books. Um, the two books I'm reviewing today are both by Katie Nicholas. They're, they are a part of the Cities in Dust series, which is this post-apocalyptic kind of series where Heli Clark, the main character, has to kind of navigate this, not dystopian, but broken world where supposedly no one else exists. And my review of the first novel, As the World Falls Down, has been out for quite a bit, I think, but I was holding off on reviewing it on the podcast because I knew I was getting a copy of the sequel, The Last Place on Earth. So, Um, And The Last Place on Earth is not the last book in the series, so this is kind of a review of the series so far. But I thought it would be a good idea today to sit down and talk about As the World Falls Down and The Last Place on Earth since yesterday I posted my review of The Last Place on Earth. So, today that's what we're going to be doing. It'll probably be a longer episode since... Both of these reviews are more recent, and I actually wrote a a decent amount, Um, and I have a lot to say about these books because it is a really good series. So, I'm so excited for that today. And, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention is I'm a complete dumbass because I've forgotten to mention this for how many episodes now? Like... 20, what is this, episode 26, episode 27, something like that. I don't know, we're in the 20s. Nah, I got ahead of myself. Episode 25, guys. <laughs> um, I've completely neglected to mention that if you really like the podcast and you want to show your support in any way, which just you listening is enough, But if you want to, you can go and leave a review or a rating on Apple Podcasts or iTunes. I think Podchaser, too, has uh, a review kind of thing. Just anywhere that you listen to the podcast, if you want to, leave a review. Leave constructive criticism. Like, I'm down to hear anything. Just the fact that you're here listening is crazy to me. Uh, But I've completely forgotten to mention (laughs) for the past 25 episodes that that's a thing and that you can do that and it would mean a lot. Uh, (laughs) So if you want to, you can go do that and I'd love to hear from you. Um, It actually came about because I was listening to Small Town Murder, which they're an amazing podcast. If you like listening to True Crime... Um, they're amazing at what they do. Their research is fantastic. Uh, but they always mention, you know, like, go rate us on Apple Podcasts. I'm like, wait. (laughs) I never mentioned that. I'm a dumbass. So, that's all I have for announcements. And I think I'm just gonna get right, go right ahead with this review. And... Since there's two novels that I will be reviewing today, I think kind of what I did with the Silver Tree series, which if you haven't listened to that episode, go check it out. It's a mystery series by Mary Andrevis, and it's really good. I'll talk about the first novel first, because why would I not? I'll give content warnings, everything like that. But then the second novel will definitely have spoilers for the first novel. So, because I won't mention spoilers for the first novel when I'm talking about the first novel but when I get to the sequel it's kind of unavoidable 
because otherwise it won't make sense. So um, I'll let you know before I start talking about the second novel and that way you can, you know, uh, close out of the episode if you don't want spoilers because I completely understand that. Uh, I just thought it would be a good idea to combine them into one episode because they're part of one series. So without further ado, let's get started on reviewing the Cities in Dust series by Katie Nicholas. Katie Nicholas for providing me with a copy of As the World Falls Down in exchange for an honest review. All quotes are taken from As the World Falls Down by Katie Nicholas. There is a content warning, sexual assault slash harassment, abuse, death, reference to a miscarriage, disease, violence, drowning, suicide, and sexual content are all present in this novel. Overall, I rated As the World Falls Down 5 out of 5 stars. The plot was 4.5 out of 5 stars, and the setting, characters, writing, and memorability were all 5 out of 5. As the World Falls Down takes the reader on a journey of discovery, adventure, love, and trust. A perfect beginning to the Cities and Death series, this novel is nothing like I've ever read before. As the World Falls Down was published by Wild Rose Press on January 15th, 2020. It is 408 pages long and the first novel in the Cities and Dust series. It's a fiction, young adult or adult, apocalyptic, dystopian science fiction romance novel. The book's description from Goodreads, Years after a mysterious plague wipes out humanity, Hallie Clark leaves the safety of home to search for other survivors. She finds Nate Reynolds, a young man devastated by loneliness and despair. Instantly, there is an inexplicable connection between them, and it becomes clear that this was no ordinary virus. They soon discover they aren't the only ones changed by the virus or guided by strange feelings or voices. Their lives and the survival of humanity rest on uncovering answers and understanding their new world. Will the truth they unearth bring them closer together or tear them apart? I absolutely fell in love with practically each and every one of the characters in this novel. Hallie Clark, Nate Reynolds, and Eve being um, among my favorite. And by the way, when I say each and every one, that does not include Hallie's asshole stepfather, Andrew. I said stepfather right now, father. (laughs) Just to clarify, Hallie doesn't know who her dad is. uh, And that's a huge focus point in the second novel. So her stepfather, Andrew. Nicholas really does a great job of making her characters realistic and relatable, uh, which I really loved because this novel is about living after a pandemic. Obviously, it's it went very different from the one we're currently living through. The entire race of humanity wasn't wiped out by a weird alien virus. But uh, regardless, they are trying to navigate this world and Hallie and Nate find each other and they instantly click and... I loved them together. Their relationship is just this perfect mix. And Nate is just this perfect guy that I think Hallie really deserves. And uh, their relationship was really, it was authentic and it wasn't like they were just thrown together. It was compelling and I really loved their relationship. And like I mentioned, as they try and navigate this post-pandemic world, They are kind of not hopeless to find other survivors, but Nate definitely is because he's lived this existence for years with no one. He's been alone. Whereas Hallie, she was with her Aunt Rebecca. They really need each other to survive at this point because they haven't seen other people for 
years. They thought everyone else was dead. So eventually, Hallie and Nate, they kind of venture out and they do find other people. One of those being Eve and there's this whole society and community of survivors who survived the virus and there were very few who did, just like there were very few who, who were immune. It was definitely interesting to see how Nicholas portrayed their characters because, like I said, they're so realistic and they're so relatable that I kind of latched on to every one of them. I loved all of the characters except for Andrew. And um, I was very nervous that one of them was going to die because it was going really well. And I don't know, maybe someone does die, maybe someone doesn't. I'm not telling you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Nicholas's characters are just excellently created and their relationships are authentic and overall they're just perfect. They're very much human, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, and I'm not even going to attempt to talk about everything wrong with Andrew. There's just too much and too little time. He's just, he's just an asshat, and I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, you can read the novel and figure out why, because I despise him. As for the writing and setting, I cannot express how amazing Katie Nicholas's writing style is. It is so not creative. Well, it is creative. <laughs> um, but it's so unique and descriptive and it really just brings the story to life uh here's hold on here's a quote from the novel just just to show you how amazing their writing is because it really just draws you in the night sky was dark and moonless splashed with thousands of twinkling lights and the faint smudges of faraway galaxies unhindered by light pollution the magnificent spectacle of the universe spread out across the deep blue yonder observed by only the few remaining humans inhabiting planet earth their writing just brings me to a place where i can focus entirely on the story and completely disregard everything around me and I think it's really nice uh, because it's a nice distraction. I read books to escape from the real world. So uh, even though this world is horrible <laughs> uh, and devastating, it was it's a nice escape because you get to spend time with characters who you really like. So um, and as for the setting and the world Nicholas created, it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. I really feel like science fiction and especially dystopian are, and like apocalyptic too, there's only so much you can tweak to make it unique. Like every, it just seems like everything's been done before personally to me. Um, because they all are very similar. There's just slight little differences that make them unique. But with this novel, it is truly something I've never read before. It is very unique and very well done. Uh, the author has managed to just combine a post-pandemic written world with a sci-fi and dystopian atmosphere. And like I said, it's such a unique thing and I haven't read anything like it before, which is very refreshing because at some point, like, for example, I read uh, the Legend series by Mary Lou, which I have to review at some point on here as well. Um, and then I also read The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. And both are obviously very different books. Like, their plot is different, but they have the same feel to them, if that makes sense. Like, they both feel very sci-fi and... Uh, they feel very similar even though the plot is different. They just have very similar themes where, you know, someone is saving their love interest from the uh, horrible, horrible government um, and they manage to tear it all down and build it back up again. Stuff like that. Uh, there's always a rebellion of sorts. But with this, it is 
it gives a different feel. It's like, it's within the same spectrum, but it's different, if that makes sense. I don't know exactly how to describe it, and words are not coming to my mind. But if you get what I mean, you get what I mean. It's just different, and it's refreshing. As I mentioned earlier, the story revolves around Hallie's goal of finding other survivors, no matter how much risk her endeavors put her at. And her aunt, Rebecca, actually is like, I went looking, and I didn't find anyone, so we're pretty much doomed. We're gonna die, and that's it. And Hallie's just like, no, nah, I don't accept that. I'm gonna find other people. And, you know, she succeeds, and she finds Nate, the love of her life, and every reader's. <laughs> and I thought that this turn of events, though not very surprising, uh, was very well written, and I loved it. The bond between the two throughout the story really pushes it along. Um, and the chaos and the uh, survival that happens in this novel as they try to navigate this world is really, really cool, I feel. Um, the only tiny complaint I have about the plot is that the story seemed to be very slow in the beginning, so it took me a little bit to get into the novel. It was very hard for me to get into the novel at first because I just felt like, oh, this girl's riding her bike around trying to find someone. Like, okay. <laughs> um, but after that, I was hooked. Like I said, As the World Falls Down is the perfect start to this timeless post-apocalyptic series that I will be talking about to everyone I know for the rest of my life. I really, really like this novel. It was the perfect mixture of many aspects of sci-fi and dystopian that I love, but it also brought fresh and new things to the table, which I really liked. Um, and it made the story really unique, so that was great. That is the end of my review of As the World Falls Down, the first novel in the Cities and Dust series by Katie Nicholas. And now I will review the second novel in the series, The Last Place on Earth. And like I said, there will be spoilers for the first novel in my discussion of the second novel. So if you don't want spoilers for the first novel and you haven't read it yet, feel free to turn off the podcast and go read the book. <laughs> but without further ado, here is The Last Place on Earth by Katie Nicholas. Interested in starting a podcast? I bet you haven't heard of Anchor, an app and site that makes it super easy to create your own. Not only is it free, but Anchor also allows you to make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor distributes your podcast for you to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more platforms. Anchor has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone and computer. It's everything you need all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M to get started today. Thank you to Witchlight Press and Katie Nicholas for providing me with a copy of this novel in exchange for an honest review. There are content warnings for this novel. Death, mentions of torture, disease, mentions of sexual assault, mentions of abuse, violence, and mentions of suicide and sex are all in this novel. I rated The Last Place on Earth 4 out of 5 stars. The plot was 3.5 out of 5, the memorability 3 out of 5, and then the setting, characters, and writing were 5 out of 5 stars. While not exceeding my love of the first novel in the series, The Last Place on Earth presents a fresh and broad array of challenges that Katie Nicholas's lovable characters must endure. Nicholas's latest book is full of suspense, mystery, and high stakes. After reading As the World Falls Down sequel, I cannot wait for the third novel in this unpredictable series. 
The Last Place on Earth was published by Witchlight Press on March 20th, 2021. It is 330 pages long and the second novel in the Cities and Dust series. The Last Place on Earth is a fiction, adult or young adult, apocalyptic, dystopian, science fiction, romance novel. The book's description from Amazon, five years on from a devastating virus, Hallie Clark and Nate Reynolds find themselves back in Siren Bay where they fell in love. The peace is soon shattered when Hallie begins to experience strange visions. The London community isn't faring much better either. Claire is missing and not even psychic conduit Eve can find her. Fortunately, Hallie's new abilities prove useful in locating the runaway team. But what has spooked Claire enough to make her flee? As Hallie's visions intensify, a ghost from her past reaches out. He has the answers Hallie so desperately wants, but he also has a story to tell her, which comes with a dire warning. The broken man is heading to London, and it will have fatal consequences for someone Hallie loves unless they can change the course of the future. While The Last Place on Earth is full of characters from the first novel, for example, Hallie, Nate, Eve, Claire, and the rest of the clue, which Claire is a very interesting character, and I don't even know what to say about her. Uh, The Last Place on Earth is also full of new and unfamiliar characters that left me very curious. Nicholas does a great job of adding fresh twists to their story while still taking their series in one direction. And the main character, Holly, to be Mama Bear, an all-around badass, she's amazing. She was my favorite character in this novel, due to her unmistakable motivation to protect everyone she loves. She's utterly selfless, which I really admire, and I feel like that is shown a lot more in this novel than it was in the last. And would it really be a review of this novel if I didn't mention Nate? The perfect man for Hallie? No, it wouldn't be. Nate is, again in this novel, just amazing. He's kind, understanding, smart, and a total sweetheart. And just perfect for Hallie. (laughs) Um, They really deserve each other. I really enjoyed how in this novel, the love between Nate and Hallie, even in the darkest of times, shines through. Again, Nicholas does a great job of making their characters realistic and making it feel like Hallie and Nate are right in front of you, acting out the chaos that can be found within the novel's pages. Introduced in this novel, though, most importantly, is Hallie's father. After reading As the World Falls Down, I was desperate to discover the story behind Hallie's heritage, and The Last Place on Earth delivered it to me. The novel actually changes point of views at one point, about 47% through to Sam's, which is Hallie's father, where we learn about his past. His section was actually my favorite part of the novel because it was something fresh and unexpected. Plus, it answered so many questions that have been left unanswered after the first novel. One thing I want to acknowledge is that the characters are incredibly intertwined in the series in the past and the present, and it becomes especially evident in this novel and especially during the switch to Sam's point of view. It's one of the little things that I thought was really neat because I am a huge fan of Marvel and I always love when Marvel, you know, interconnects tiny little details and you're like, oh my gosh, that's actually really cool. Like, I didn't know that before. And this novel does that and I was really excited. I was like, cool, this is awesome. Um, (laughs) And once again, Nicholas's writing has a way of drawing one in with a pleasant introduction just to engulf you in a world of chaos and horrors. The world of the Cities and Dust series is magnificent. It's dark and yet bright, despairing yet hopeful. The Last Place on Earth adds more to the world Nicholas created and yet also creates new questions about it. And it actually left me really excited for the third novel in the series. Now, here's where we get to a little bit of spoilers for the first novel. So, if you're still here, this is your last warning, okay? (laughs) Um... The book picks off right where As the World Falls Down ends. Hallie and Nate have just found Rebecca, Hallie's aunt, dead. And they discover that Hallie 
basically she okay so the survivors of the virus they are kind of mutated where to fully evolve they have to die first and then come back and then they're pretty much immortal there's some things that can kill them like blood loss and a bunch of other stuff but for the most part they are immortal and are able to connect with the aliens or whatever they are that control the cyrus to kill everyone basically and Hallie basically discovers that she already died, which is how she was able to become pregnant, uh, since survivors are usually infertile. And the reason she was eight, she is now pregnant, is because she died the night before she was going to leave the house where she and Rebecca were staying because Rebecca went crazy or something and killed them both. Uh, but Rebecca wasn't a survivor. She was just immune. So Rebecca just died. And uh, Hallie is obviously very devastated and not ready to return to the rest of the survivors. So she and Nate take a stop at the place where they first met, Siren Bay. After some recuperation, Nate and Hallie travel back to the rest of the survivors to find that chaos has kind of erupted. Claire is missing, and a strange man may bring about the decimation of their family and community, and then Hallie keeps seeing spectral figures, like ghosts, pretty much. And she just has to navigate the past to learn how to best fight against foes in the future. And that's where her father comes in and she's able to discover some things about the past that she never knew about and prepare for the future. Unfortunately, I was actually really frustrated at first with this novel. It took me a while to become really intrigued by the story. So for the first half of the book, none of my answers were questioned and more were introduced. I was very confused and didn't have a good grasp on what was going on. Uh, the only thing that really kept me reading at that point was my need to have my questions answered. And because I loved the first novel so much, I really wanted to push through and finish this one. And I'm really glad I did because once the point of view switched from Hallie's to her father's, I became fascinated with the story again. The second half of the novel was my favorite and redeemed my opinion of it. It became fast-paced and answered my questions while also delving deeper into the world of the series, which I really appreciated and I really loved. It was just the first half of the novel that I felt was so slow and I nearly, I was struggling, like I, it took me a month to read this book, uh, but I was also reading other books in between that too, so not entirely this book's fault, just because I can't focus on one thing at once. Um... <laughs> But it did take me longer than it took me to read the first novel um, because, like I mentioned with my review of As the World Falls Down, I did feel that the beginning of the novel for that was a bit slow as well, but it wasn't half of the novel. It was like the first five chapters maybe. This was like 47% of the novel that I was very, I was struggling to get through it. Um, because not much was happening. Like, a few moments I was like, aw, Hallie and Nate are cute. And then I was like, okay, can we get back to the chaos? Because I, I want the chaos. Um, but we did. So, uh, the second half of the novel is definitely much better. And now I am so hyped up for the third novel in this really intriguing series. Because the ending left me on a huge cliffhanger and I really want to know what happens next. Like, I am so anxious to read the next book because the biggest thing, in my opinion, happened at literally the last page of the novel and I just want to find out what happens next and it's driving me nuts. Um, but besides that, I think that is the end of my review of The Last Place on Earth and the first two novels in the Cities in Dust series by Katie and Nicholas. I have everything from Katie Nicholas's website and Twitter to my reviews of the novel to, um, uh, the 
Amazon links, which are affiliate links, by the way. And like I mentioned last episode, that just means I get a percentage of the money from your purchase and it doesn't cost you anymore. It just gives me money. Um, but also there too, I have the Goodreads links. So if you want to add that to your Goodreads shelves, those are in the description or the show notes, whatever you want to call them because I'm not that fancy. <laughs> that is the end of my review of the Cities in Dust series so far by Katie Nicholas. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please check out my blog, Maya's Reviews, at mayagreviews.wordpress.com. You can also find me at Maya the Bookworm on Twitter, Goodreads, BookBub, and Book Sirens. I did delete my TikTok account for the blog and the podcast because I just felt like it wasn't productive anymore. I wasn't having fun. And uh, yeah, so that's gone. Um, <laughs> I'm also on Tumblr at Myra Reviews. Uh, make sure you leave a review or a rating on Apple Podcasts or iTunes or Podchaser, wherever you listen, if you can. Uh, it would be very much appreciated and it would help me out a lot. So thank you. If you want me to review your book or want to come on the podcast to discuss a novel, maybe even just reach out to me. You can email me at mayagbookreviews at gmail.com. I do ask that if you are reaching out in regards to a review request, interview, collab, blog tour, or anything publicity related, that you check out my publicity request page on my blog first and then email me. Thank you so much for listening and happy reading and happy Halloween, everyone. I'm sad October. October. <laughs> I'm sad October is over soon, but it's also Halloween. Anyways, happy Halloween.